Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am looking at Hypercore. What on earth is this? Well, the About section tells us all. This is a liquid warping GAN with attention, a unified framework for human image synthesis. Ooh, okay, so there's a little link there to the website. If you're going to have a look at the website, then it tells us all about Impersonator++. Got a reference video there and the source images down there. And yes, you can make the images dance or move according to the reference video. You want all the technical details and there's the abstract and the framework overview there so dig in and figure out what on earth is going on if like me you're fairly simple and you just want to install it and run and have a little play then there's two options there's actually a pre-compiled version for microsoft windows and there's a little link there to tell you what to do on that so if you're using microsoft windows head over there use the pre-compiled version and uh, yes uh, robert is probably your father's brother However, I am using Ubuntu Linux, so let's go ahead and install it on this. Now, there are a few requirements to note here. Depending on the image size, you will need a particular amount of GPU memory. So uh, if you're going 1024 by 1024, yeah, you're, you're looking at 20 gig there. That's that's quite a lot. Uh, even 512 by 512 looks like 9.8 gig. So if you've got an old 1070 or 1080, then... Uh, yeah, maybe you want to go a little bit smaller, down to 384. But uh, yeah, there's there's also a link there to run it on Google Colab too. So you can play with your own uh, V100 if you are lucky. So something for everyone there. Now, installing it, there's the little link here, install.md. So if we go and have a look over there, there we go. Uh, and it pretty much tells you how to install it there. Now, um, I've essentially just written my own instructions because this was a little bit off. There were a few extra things that I had to do. And uh, these were sort of not quite exactly in the order that I wanted them as well. So, of course, I am using Anaconda and uh, git clone. I get all the code down, cd into the hypercore directory, create my new Python virtual environment with conda create minus minus name. This time I'm using hypercore and Python 3.7. Python 3.7 was quite important in this as there weren't particularly uh, compiled binaries available for 3.6 when I tried. Obviously, once you've created your virtual environment, you should activate it, Condor Activate Hypercore, in my case. And uh, this is also a strange one in that I also need a local CUDA toolkit install. So you head over to the NVIDIA site and you can uh, download, in my case, Linux x86 Ubuntu 2004 run file there and it gives me the installer there. So just run those, that will download the CUDA installer. It's quite big, a couple of gig, and uh, that, will, that will install it. Now that will install it over to user local CUDA and you will need to know that so that you can set your CUDA home. You've got export CUDA home there and also uh, this is a requirement not for CUDA but just for this one specific program for this setup.py uh, you should create a version.txt file and inside that version.txt file you put the words CUDA version and uh, then something in there matching your CUDA version. Now I'm actually using 11.2 uh, but there isn't an 11.2 in the setup code. Uh, it's 11.0 or 10.2 if you're using 10.2. So uh, yeah, put your put your CUDA version in there. Now, if we go and have a look at the setup code I am talking about, it's this one here. So setup.py. And if we have a look at this here, you see there the CUDA 11.0 and 10.2. So you've got to pick one of the ones that is in that list. Otherwise, that setup will fail and things will go pretty weird. Uh, and it, it did fail in my case anyway, but it was fairly easy to uh, to fix afterwards anyway. So once uh, you've got your, your CUDA home export set up and your user local CUDA version text file, then you can run Python setup py develop, and that will install pretty much everything for you, apart from, in my case, it installed a package without GPU support. So I installed the one with GPU support using a pip install mmcv full. So there's, a, there's more information on that over on the mmcv GitHub page. Uh, but uh, yes, that, that command there will work for the new Ampere cards, much like me on my RTX 3090. That will get the latest version down that works with CUDA 11 and these new Ampere cards. And then finally, all you need is to download the assets. So in the assets directory there, there is a download script that will download everything for you. You are then ready to run. So that's, that's basically condensed everything on that page into uh, various places. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you've got the download there, and that downloads the checkpoints and samples into the assets directory. Great stuff. So, I'll get rid of that one as well. Now, the next thing is running it. 
running it. So there's a link there, script runner, so we'll pop over there. And this is where you see a very big, long and, and perhaps slightly confusing set of commands, but it, it's all right. Once you've, uh, once you've run it once, uh, you very much get the hang of it. So there's lots of text, lots of text here, lots of text here, lots of text here. And then they finally give you an example there. So you're basically looking at the image size there, 512, num source. So if, you, if you're not sure what any of these are, you can scroll back up and have a look at these things here. So uh, yeah, it's got uh, num source and path and name and BG path and yeah. So there, the, uh, the number of source images for attention default is too large and needs more GPU memory. So yeah, fine. Um, typically I have just left that at two all the time and it seems to work absolutely fine. Uh, so you'll probably be all right just leaving that on two. Uh, and then you've got an outputs directory, assets directory. Now the assets directory is uh, is quite an important one because it has to have all these various things in it. So I've made my own directories here, images and videos, uh, but it does also need to have these checkpoints and configs and samples. So that's why I've made mine subdirectories under the samples directory because it does also need those checkpoints and configs as well excellent stuff now these uh, these commands do look rather long and complicated uh, but they're not really like I mentioned so, um, so you've got the model ID there Donald Trump 2 source path and the refer path, reference path and these are basically pointing to the, the places in here so I've got got my own ones here as because uh, reasons so images and videos is what I call so image is the source and reference is the video so I've got images there so that's just a bunch of different images yeah, for example, I've got a playing card, that's a person, a person on a cross, an Egyptian thing, and all these all these different things to uh, to test animating. And uh, yep, there we go. Oh, you can put backgrounds in as well. So you've got a, if you want a, a particular background, you can change that. Lots of things you can change in here. And uh, videos, there we go, videos. I've got a few videos there, and they are just some pretty basic videos. Now I've got all my bits and pieces here. Uh, from uh, Pexels, you got lots of lots of dance videos there. So you want ideally a dance video where the camera isn't moving around a lot. So something like that, not not quite so good because you haven't got a feet in it. Something like that, not so good because there's lots and lots of people in it. But something like that is ideal. You've got one person moving, the camera isn't moving too much. The person's always in the centre of the video. So yeah, that's that's sort of an ideal video to look at. Again, that one's quite a good video. There's a little bit of camera movement, but the, the person's primarily in the middle of the video, so that's excellent. And if you want some pictures of people standing, then, you know, Unsplash, that's a good place as well, so you can get lots of pictures of people standing, so yeah, yeah. And if you want it to uh, to go to some music, then uh, Pixabay also has various bits of music that you can put to it afterwards. Excellent stuff. So, what on earth is going on here? Well, there's, there's quite a few things. You can uh, run single image as source input. Run a folder as source input. You can run with a real background and uh, your own custom imports, which is uh, of course inputs, which is of course what I'm doing here. So this is where you've got. Uh, say you've got an image of a person. So I've just downloaded an image of a person. I've only got one image there. Then you'd be looking at that first one. So you've got a sim single image. If you've got uh, a few images, so you're running as a folder, um, then you might have the a picture of the person from the front and a picture of the person from the back. Uh, if you've only got a picture of the person from the front, then when the person spins around, you'll find that they have a face on both sides of their head. Now you might want that. Might, that, that may be something that's quite good for you. Uh, or you, you, know, you, you may want to have lots of different uh, images in there to show them from the front and the side and all that sort of stuff. Um, it does give you examples in there. You know, you've got the reference images and the source images there. So as you can see, this has got a background. Like there's an empty background there. And then this one has person from the front and person from the back so yeah and the the a frame is the best sort of pose that you can get because that's uh, that, that captures all the uh, the textures needed for the model right so let's dig into this and, and and see what's going on let's see what's going on right so i basically copied and pasted one of these out of here and i am just going to change all of these so that it is slightly more meaningful to the particular one that i am doing so i've got my uh, assets samples there I've got images and videos and that's what's going down here so images which image am i going to use i'm i'm going to use this one let's use this one here okay so uh we'll go here and load save file I'll save that into samples images and i'm just going to call this test.jpg there we go fantastic stuff right 
Okay, so that'll do. I'm going to call this model ID test. Got the source path here, images, and test. And that was called, uh, I think that was a JPEG, wasn't it? Test.jpg. Yep. Let's do test.jpg. There we go. And then you can give it a name. Call this test. Wow. Okay. So that's the, that's the source source path done. Uh, reference path. We're going to make that, make that uh, image dance somehow. So I've got these various videos here. So uh, let's see. Let's have a look at that. Got street dance there. Someone dancing outside. Well, there's another one there. Someone dancing outside. So um, yeah, let's, let's do that one. Let's do that one for a laugh, shall we? So asset samples videos, street dance two. A little two on the end there. And then call it street dance two. Street dance two test. Now you've got a number of options that you can put on the end here. So you've got FPS there. That's fairly obvious. Uh, you've got pose FC and cam FC. And as you can see from the uh, example above, you can also put a background image into that as well. If you want as well. So Pose FC and Cam FC is basically to do with smoothing. So if we pop back here, let's swap up top again. Um, so let's have a quick look for Cam FC. There we go. Um, so essentially, the, the lower the number the, here, so for the Pose FC, um, the smoother um, it's going to be. So if you put that all the way down to one, then the model is barely going to move at all. If you put it up to like a thousand, then the model is going to be flicking all over the place. And the same goes for the cam FC. So there's the smooth factor of the temporal poses and uh, yeah, the smooth factor of the temporal cameras. There you go. So uh, yeah, that, that explains what it is up there. Right. But I, I like playing with the examples. So uh, yeah, 300 is about is about right. That's about the default and 150 is about the default for that. So that that's pretty much that's pretty much set and ready to go. So we copy that entire command because it's so big. That's why I do it in uh, notepad first before actually pasting it out <laughs> in there. OK, so there we have that enormous command. And if we cross all of our fingers and all of our toes, that, that should start working. Brilliant. There we go. So it goes through all the, uh, the different options it's got there. So you can see FPS 25, Pose FC 310, Cam FC 155. So that's that's exactly what we sent in there. Excellent. So this does its pre-processing. It, it splits up your video into different frames. There it is. There it is, cutting the video up. And uh, then it goes through, does the pose estimation, and uh, eventually comes out with your dancing model in the end. I, in true Nerdy Rodent style, am, of course, going to modify time while this does its magic. OK, and there we go. So. Let's have a look over here. So in the results directory, you get a whole bunch of different stuff. So you've got primitives there, models there. Now the models basically just has a little model there. So you don't need that. That's fine. Primitives, you can see test and street dance. Now in the processed one there, you've got a bunch of stuff. So you've got the original audio from the images from the original video, original video frames there. There you go. Original video. And that's how it changes it. So that's the scaling factor. And then if you specified a background, so you've got all those bits and pieces in there. But the main thing you're looking for is in the uh, synthesis bit, in the imitators, and there's, there's your street dance. But uh, here's all the other bits as well. So you can see there, it's done the, the pose estimation, and it's done the 3D model, and it's got masking and all, all sorts of other things. So you can, you can see all the various things that it's doing along the way, which is quite fun. So let's have a look at this final video. So synthesis imitations, street dance, there you go. One picture, dancing, like the street dance. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. There we go. So lots and lots of fun, loads of different things that you can do with it. As mentioned, you can you know, put your own background in there and uh, have front and back heads as well if you want. So when they spin around, it, it doesn't look cursed. Um, lots and lots of fun. I would highly recommend it. I per core. Excellent. Anyway, that's enough from me. Rodent out.